Hello. Here's a big question. What is causing the Earth to warm? Natural factors might play a role. For example, the wobble and tilt of the Earth's axis are not constant, and neither is the shape of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. These changes repeat on timescales ranging from 26,000 to 100,000 years, and one can calculate their effect on the amount of energy our planet receives from the Sun. A scientist named Milutin Milankovic worked out the theory behind these cycles in the early 20th century, and they are named Milankovic cycles after him. This graph shows the combined effect of all three cycles on the solar radiation reaching the Earth, going from 800,000 years ago to today. The effect of this changing solar input over time has been significant. It has pushed the Earth's climate in and out of cold and warm phases. In addition to these cycles, the output of energy from the Sun itself is not constant, and since the Sun is the Earth's primary energy source, changes in its output can affect the Earth's climate. Instruments on satellites can measure the Sun's energy output, and we see in this plot of total solar irradiance over the last four decades that the Sun has a cycle of changes in output. It's reasonable to wonder how these changes might affect the Earth's climate. Volcanoes can both warm and cool the climate, in the short term, particles added to the atmosphere from volcanic eruptions block some sunlight from reaching the Earth, and this has a cooling effect. For example, the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991 led to an almost 1 degree Fahrenheit decrease in average global temperatures over the following 15 months. But volcanic eruptions also release carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere traps heat around the planet. These types of natural processes have been going on for billions of years, four and a half billion years to be exact, since that's how old our planet is, and they're still going on today. But another factor comes into play today, the effect of human activities, especially since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. We've been changing the surface of the planet in the way we use land, and changing the chemical composition of the atmosphere in a variety of ways but especially by burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. These activities have led to a buildup of carbon dioxide and other gases in the atmosphere that trap heat around the Earth. We call these greenhouse gases because of their warming effect. With so many different factors that can cause climate change, how do we sort them all out? Can we separate human and natural factors and see which ones are the biggest drivers of climate change? We have a tool to help do this, climate models. These are numerical models run on powerful computers, and they solve the fundamental equations of physics that govern the climate system. This graph will show the results of a climate model for the entire planet that's run back into the past for the time period of 1880 to 2012. The graph will show something called temperature anomaly. This may sound like a strange term, but it's just a difference in temperature relative to some baseline. A positive temperature anomaly indicates a temperature warmer than the baseline, and a negative temperature anomaly indicates a temperature colder than the baseline. The baseline is a long-term average of temperatures over at least 30 years. In this case, the baseline is the surface temperature of the Earth averaged over the period 1880 to 1910. The data come from a model run by NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, and they are broken down so we can see the contributions of different natural and human factors. First, we plot observed temperature anomaly data from that period so we can compare the model results with actual measurements of temperature anomaly. These measurements cover both the Earth's land and ocean surfaces, and we see that the Earth's temperature has risen, with a more rapid rise since the 1970s. The first model factor we'll look at is changing output of energy from the sun. The sun's output has a cycle that repeats on average every 11 years, but overall the sun's output hasn't changed significantly during modern times, so it hasn't made much of a difference in changing the climate. What about volcanoes? We see the signs of some large volcanic eruptions, such as when Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991. Particles released into the atmosphere from these eruptions blocked enough sunlight to temporarily cool the climate. Apart from these cooling events, volcanoes have not had a big effect on modern climate change. 
orbital factors, such as changes in the Earth's orbit around the Sun and the position of the Earth's axis, can change the amount of sunlight the Earth receives. These are the Milankovitch cycles. These cycles cause changes on time scales of thousands of years, so in the last 140 years they've had almost no effect. If we add up the effects of these three factors, we get the combined effect of all natural factors. It doesn't match the trend of the measurements shown in the black curve, so we can rule out these natural factors as the cause of modern climate change. Now let's look at factors related to human activities. The model includes the effect of black carbon, or soot, that has fallen on the snowy surfaces of glaciers and ice sheets around the world since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. When these surfaces are darkened by soot, they absorb more sunlight and warm up. The net effect on climate, however, has been very small. The model results show the effect of changing land use on the reflectivity of the Earth's surface. As humans converted forests to farmland, those land surfaces became lighter in color and reflected away more sunlight. This has a cooling effect over time, though not a large one. Deforestation can also result in warming through the release of carbon dioxide when trees are burned or cut down. This effect will be factored in later in the model. The model includes the effect of ozone. Ozone is a greenhouse gas, and ozone changes in the stratosphere have had a slight cooling effect. Ground-level ozone from pollution has had a warming effect. Overall, however, the contribution of ozone changes is small. Human-derived aerosols in the atmosphere are tiny particles that come from things like burning coal, oil, and forests. Sulfate aerosols from burning fossil fuels are a cause of acid rain, so they're considered a pollutant. Aerosols reflect away sunlight from the Earth, and because of this they have a cooling effect on the climate, which is actually quite significant. Greenhouse gases have a significant effect in the other direction. They warm the planet, and that warming has increased as greenhouse gases have built up in the atmosphere. The model inputs here are based on measurements of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, so they include the effects of things like fossil fuel burning, deforestation, and cement production. We can combine the factors from human activities and then bring back the plot showing natural factors. What's evident is that the human factors account for most of the warming, with greenhouse gases being the dominant factor. To complete the model, we combine all factors, both natural and human, and we see good general agreement between the model and the measurements. This model, along with similar results from many other climate models, tell us that human activity is changing the climate. Now that we know that an increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is the driving force behind modern climate change, another big question is, what is the primary source of those greenhouse gases? We mentioned a few suspects here, like fossil fuel burning and changing land use. It turns out that direct evidence in the atmosphere identifies the culprit, but that's a story for another time.